Hello guys from paradise. I told you guys, it seems like we're in Hawaii right now. Look at this beautiful lake beach area. I am in the London Bridge Beach, so it's right across um, the bridge from the mainland of Havasu. Uh, it's super beautiful. The water is so blue. I wanna jump in the water, um, which I never do if I'm in an ocean or something. headed to the Slot Canyon, um, or they call it the Crack. Um, it is here in Sarah Park in Lake Havasu. Um, it's literally supposed to be a Slot Canyon, kind of like the ones that you see in Utah. I really wanna go. They have um, a rope, a ladder. Um, I'm really up for it and it's a beautiful day. It is a bit windy though, so. are so big majestic huge rocks everywhere surrounding you and it's just follow the wash follow the wash all the way to the canyon Sweet Canadian. You can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kim Goodwin. Go hiking! Woo! She's a professional at this, so she's been teaching me a lot, especially in the canyon. I was a little weary of doing it myself, but she popped up and now I can't even breathe. <laughs> I really have never truly seen a like covered carport area in anywhere in America, uh, especially for a parking at a grocery store. And of course, they have it in Lake Havasu. I've only seen this in like the Middle East, like in Dubai and stuff. This is at Basha's um, grocery store, which is actually um, a native grocery store here in Arizona um, as a chain. I can't even imagine in the summertime here though, uh, how that sun beating down, especially on your car while you're in inside shopping and then you come out and especially if you have black leather seats or something, um, you're, you're gonna be burned.
I'm staying at the beautiful Cattail Cove State Park. Sorry, my hair is crazy. It's like a whole beach area. And here I am in my bathing suit, thinking I'm going to be able to swim. The water is crystal clear, but you bet it's freezing. We have canoes and kayaks that you can rent here um, from the state park. And they have a whole dog park over there, which I will show you guys, and a private dog beach. So many places to hike here. day guys here in Lake Havasu Ricky just got done playing and we're just enjoying this view good morning guys and welcome back to the vlog it is currently Wednesday um, and I'm on a little hike right now in Cattail Cove State Park uh, I'm just staying here for two days um, and I'm really enjoying my time here so far the water is right here there's a huge dog park as you've seen Ricky play um, it's an absolutely beautiful place um, just for a little bit of time the water down here is so crystal clear it just mesmerizes me because I'm not used to really clear water, <laughs> except for you know when I've been when I was in Italy and things like that. So, really, it's kind of rare for me to see it in the U.S. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see. I know it's a lake, guys. I know it's not an ocean, but it's still really pretty. guys with this gorgeous view I might as well tell you a little bit about what's been happening um, if the wind will ever stop uh, so I got to Cattail Cove yesterday um, I needed to dump anyways um, and fill fresh water and stuff so I had to go ahead and you know book a site I thought I was gonna pay anyways to dump and fill this is not a usual thing but I really wanted to see the state park anyways and I think that it is a good time uh, weather's really nice um, and it's really close to where I was staying on BLM land. Uh, I'm going back to boondocking after this. Um, but it was great to get a shower, be fresh. Uh, Ricky played so, so much. Met a lot of good friends at the dog park. Um, awesome people who are staying here too. Um, and, and it's a great experience. I mean, I wanted to be right near the water um, in, in more privately. And, you know, this is the perfect place for it. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit what has been going on yesterday was kind of a chaotic day. So yesterday in the morning, Ricky and I were gonna go for a hike. Um, we had not arrived yet here. Um, we were going to go for a hike and this is at a public park and a man, an older man, had his um, aggressive dog off of a leash and no collar, nothing, started bolting across the street at me and Ricky. I'm running and screaming with Ricky um, because I can tell the dog's vicious. Well, he is. He almost tried to bite Ricky's face off. I had to keep pulling. Well, the owner was just standing across the street. No Fs given at all. Um, and I'm screaming towards him and he was saying, relax, he's friendly. I said, I have no reason to lie to you. Uh, he saw, he finally made his way over the street after having his good old ass time while trying to get over. Came across the street and said, he looked at me and he's like, he's not aggressive. I said, look. And sure enough, he started hitting his dog and saying, you're bad, you're bad to his dog. If you don't want to train your dog, if your dog is not socialized, if your dog is anyway aggressive, then you need to rethink your life as a dog owner, okay? You shouldn't have a dog that's not fair to the dog that you made them vicious. And also, 
you should not be so entitled to think that you could go anywhere in the public with your dog off of a leash. I'm sorry, nobody's that, nobody should be that entitled. And he was very entitled, so always watch around you guys. I didn't even get to get out of the parking lot, so we had to do that. Anyways, I reported him. Um, and hopefully that dog could A, either get some training he needs. He looks very senior though. He looks like he's like 14 years old. So, um, or you know what? Owner needs a good kick in the, on a lighter note, guys. I feel like I'm in Europe. I feel like I'm on the Mediterranean. We are in the Mediterranean coast of Arizona. <laughs> did start my morning as well on Pacific time, which actually we're technically in Havasu, we're still in mountain time. There was signs by the bathrooms here at the campground saying, hey, you know, check your phones because it switches to Pacific time, but we are indeed in mountain time still because the border of California is literally right here over the river. So I was thinking the whole time that it was an hour difference than it really was, so, um, I had to go change that back and uh, get myself back on track for meetings. Guys, we are about 1.2 mile in. I am on White's trail. Um, it says about 0.1 mile to White's Retreat, so if you do this hike, this is the, the route that I'm on. There's Ted's Trail and McKinney Loop. I did not go those, but I'm going to have to head back now because I do have work priorities. Yesterday's chaos turned into today's beautiful, beautiful vibes. It's just amazing. You're always going to have the bad with the good, like I always say, and one day could be complete and utter crap and one day can be so beautiful and you're like is this really my life because that's how i feel right now this is my life like this is so dope afternoon right now I'm just in that time of the day where I'm like <laughs> that kind of feeling um, we had a really productive morning had my shower dump my tanks I'm here at the campground at this beautiful beautiful state park um, and I'm just so happy um, to be by the water again feels great it also gives me time to recuperate um, and kind of get things a little bit more organized again because you know living in um, you know an RV or a van you kind of always have to be um, organizing because it's such a small space so you really can't have everything out which I do right now I picked up a weight from Walmart the other day it's only an eight pounder which is plenty for me um, just to incorporate in my exercises so um, that is really something I love about boondocking and being on public land is that you have so much space you have privacy I can go out and feel super comfortable working out during the day and not having all eyes on me where in a campground you're almost always on top of each other and I just can't do that. I can't have people staring at me while I'm trying to work out. It just makes me so uncomfortable and just not all that confident. <laughs> so maybe it's a state park thing. You have to tell me if you can. When you're at a spot, not like the other campground that I was at, um, you know, you have your electric hookup, you have your water, um, but there's there's no dumping um, hole in the ground in the actual campsite. So you have to actually go to the dump station, which is here. Um, so I went in before I actually came and set up my campsite. Um, is this normal? Um, or is this a whole state park thing um, and it's only in campgrounds that they actually do that? Let me know. When I was telling you guys before that I'm in two different time zones right now, well, what seems to be, okay, because California and then, you know, Arizona right here. I have, I use Apple products, okay? So I have um, a MacBook, which is on 
right now it's on the right time which is mountain standard time my phone and my watch which is both apple as well is on 154 i don't know i don't know where i am who i am or whatever time zone i'm in so help Guys, we made it to the retreat. They have a picnic table, a fire pit, and people are parked their canoes there, and you can have the little water access here. And we are approximately about a mile and a half in, and the retreat is here. So, so far my take on Arizona is that Western Arizona is definitely stunning. Phoenix is cool for that metro area. And when I say Phoenix, I kind of mean Scottsdale, um, Avondale, Goodyear, all that old town Scottsdale, which I really did enjoy for like a town city feeling. But when it comes to actual scenery, hikes, mountains, even water, I'm loving, loving Western Arizona. I'm super excited to go up to Northern Arizona as well. Um, when it gets warmer, of course, not right now. And also, I'm really excited to get to Sedona when it gets warmer. Just a little too cold for me right now, but those beautiful big red rocks, I'm just so excited about. When I arrived in Parker, driving through Parker, and before I even reached Havasu, I was so excited because I thought to myself, this is the Arizona that you think about when you think about Arizona. It's just, it's so grand. The rocks, houses built into the rocks, it's just beautiful. But guys, I thought I should catch this moment in the spur of it. I saw a coyote coming down the other trail down the hill, and just popping his head, he's walking down the hill. Um, over next to the right of me and I kind of ran back here to the retreat because there's two people here and I, I never had an encounter with a coyote only in a car before so these people said that they their temperament is they're probably more skittish and afraid of, of a person than we are of them however I don't feel like that right now but they said that if you don't bother it or sneak up on it, it won't bother you. And to keep, you know, Ricky on a tight leash, and I do keep him on a leash anyways, but just closer to me. Um, but that spooked me. He came right over that hill over there. So he had to go into this kind of canyon mountain area. We were gonna go up the trail that's called Ted's Trail into the mountain more, but we're gonna decide to go near the water more. I feel a little bit safer. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope we don't encounter him again. That hike kicked my ass because it was the second one of the day and all of that action and commotion happened towards the end when Ricky and I saw a coyote coming down the mountain so casually next to us. I should be prepared for these moments as I'm in wilderness. I live pretty much in nature all the time. However, it's just a different scenario when you're seeing it for the first time in front of you and your fight or flight mode just comes on. So, I saw those people on the retreat um, they told me don't be afraid so I kept my handy dandy mace in my hand as if you know if it were to come to me I'll try to use it as quick as possible who knows if I'll even get to it even though it's in my hand in that situation but we had it on hand I kept Ricky on a really tight um, leash I have a retractable so I kept it on like really short um, he was next to me the whole time and I was just trying to go like at a normal pace um, and uh, we made it here. We're safe. Thank God. I would be really intrigued to hear um, what you outdoors people and wilderness people, you know, um, avid hikers, um, outdoor enthusiasts use um, for kind of like um, precautions or, or kind of even, you know, safety measures, weapons um, when you go out um, in regards to animals, solely animals. So do you use mace? I know there's bear spray. Is there other kind of things that you would use as well um, to keep yourself safe or if you feel more secure with a specific item or tool? Um, let me know. 
uh, drop it below in the comments. I, I would love to to get your guys' opinion, um, what you think that you know is most beneficial and what I could be picking up next at the store. So Ricky and I are gonna go have dinner. We're gonna enjoy ourselves here and we're just gonna have some R&R &R since we had a crazy, crazy productive day today. So um, thank you guys for tuning into the vlog and I will have a new vlog posted by um, the weekend for you guys. And uh, we're gonna be doing some more exciting things and uh, our last day here at Cattail will be tomorrow. So uh, we are checking out and heading to our next spot. So we will see you soon and as always thanks for stopping by guys leave any comments um anything that you know you would like to know uh shoot it in the comments i'll answer it say bye 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 youtube